So today is a special day for me because I'm sitting down here with Mike Allen. Mike, how are you? Good, good, good. How are you? (laughs) Good. It's great to meet you and sit here. And the reason why this is such a special occasion for me is because Mike is actually one of my students in my finder program. We call it 10K Club. And uh, I don't often get to meet my students and finders and and get to actually meet in person and and get to know you and meet you and talk to you. And so I find this just a, a tremendous privilege for me. So excited to kind of get to do this and personalize our relationship now. And so thank you again for sitting down with me. We're going to talk all about a deal you did. And I've actually got something for you. I'm going to pull this up here. This is a, see if I can get this in the screen here. This is a giant $10,000 check for a deal that we just did. And I want to present this to you. Let me give this to you here. And let's get in the frame here, Mike. Come, come sure. turn around so we can see this. Okay. There we go. And this is yours, baby. Look at that. Thank you. Awesome. $10,000 for a deal that you found and brought to me. So I'm going awesome. to set that down over there. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and what's cool, Mike, is this is a deal in Oklahoma City. Yep. And you live here in Phoenix. We're in Phoenix right now recording this at uh, Brent Daniels Studio. Thank you, Brent Daniels, for letting us use your studio. This is just, isn't this just the most beautiful? I have never seen, I wish you guys could see this studio. It's the most beautiful studio I've ever seen. Really awesome. Uh, So he's letting us use his his office today. And here we are sitting down. And I want to talk about your deal and share with the audience here on, on my YouTube channel about this deal. And what's great, this is your first deal, right? Yes, the first, this is, first deal into the 10K program. Okay. And how long ago did you get started in real estate? Well, a long time ago, uh, back in uh, actually 88. 1988. Yeah, yeah. Okay. First started, my, first, my first flip, we found the ugliest house in the nicest neighborhood and did that. Okay. You bought so, it, fixed it, and flipped it. Yeah. Okay. And what have you been doing since then? Well, uh, did some uh, cur- some uh, multifamily flips mm. in Phoenix when I first came in town here. Okay. And uh, the market was real, real soft then. Mm. So I wish I would have held on to a couple mm. of those. In the 90s? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 94. Uh-huh. And so, uh, but then started doing uh, more uh, sandwich lease options. Okay. And so I had started doing a little bit of that in, up there. And so started doing that and built up... Uh, some of those and um, did some more wholesaling. I've done some co-wholesaling, done, done some rehabs and flips and stuff, but uh, just really um, have been kind of slow for a while, mm. you know, so I decided to jump into 10K and yeah. get some quick cash. Okay. So then you saw my program came into that program. And why did you pick Oklahoma City as a market to work? Well, I just looked at um, different markets that had lower uh, pri- medium price range, mm, mm-hmm. and uh, it seemed like there wasn't a lot of activity going on there. I thought it hit some good indicators for um, uh, being a, a good place, mm-hmm. you know, so just decided to try that. So virtually from Phoenix started in a market in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City is a fun place. I haven't done a lot of deals there, but... It's uh, you're right. It's it's priced affordable, so I think yes. it's drawing a lot of attention. And now, since the pandemic, people a lot of people can work from home and they can live anywhere. And so you're seeing a lot of migration to these more affordable markets. Feels like it seems that way. Yeah. Yeah. So like this house that that you found, um, you know, our ARV on this house is in the three hundreds, like low three hundreds, I think. And it's and it's it's a beautiful neighborhood, nice homes. Very nice. Yeah, so like below the national median at four hundred thousand, and so it's kind of exciting to to do that. So let's talk about now a little bit how you went about this deal, and I'd love to know a little bit of your marketing strategy. So being virtual has some nuances, right? Because you're not there, you can't go see things, you can't go look at it. There's some challenges with like how do you get boots? On, I call it boots on the ground, people that can do things for you. How did you kind of set up your process there in Oklahoma City? I used the double dip strategy with agents and uh, just started it. calling agents uh, as fast as I could. You mm-hmm. know, I, I made some mistakes in the be- beginning. I learned a lot yeah. from this whole process because uh, I thought I knew a lot about real estate, but, I had, <laughs> but I've done, done a lot of wholesaling, but but mostly co-wholesaling. So I hadn't really okay. got involved in both sides of it. Okay. So, um, 
But uh, here, uh, you know, I had to do the ARVs and mm -hmm. make sure everything is right. So I'm kind of a perfectionist. So I spent a lot of time, like maybe a couple hours on one ARV, you know, Ooh, in the very beginning. Yeah. So it, it took me quite a while. And I and I thought I was doing a good job. And so when um, when I, I, I submitted it and it got bumped back for yes. several different reasons, several yeah. different occasions, it was a little discouraging at first. But then I realized, no, this is a learning op opportunity for me. You know, good so attitude. I, I learned. Yeah. And I, I developed and I got to really understand how to find the right property for the person who's going to be doing the fix and flipping. Mm. You know, so that's 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 the whole. Let's talk about a couple of things you said there. That's really very important things you mentioned there. You know, if you're if you tend to be kind of a perfectionist type personality, your number one challenge is going to be overanalyzing. That was what I was doing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so every time I talk to somebody, I very quickly can determine based on their personality where their challenges are going to be. And if you're not a, a, like a quick fire type person, you know, like a, like a, just get it done. That that's got some challenges too, because you can get yourself in a mess real quick and then have to dig your way back out. Yep. I tend to do that a little bit. Done that. Done that too. Right. <laughs> yep. But overanalyzing where you're like, man, I, I want to make sure I really do this right. I really get the right numbers. I want to get this right. You tend to then overanalyze and then you spend a lot of time per deal and then that limits the amount of offers you're able to make exactly. in a given time frame, like in a week on a weekly basis. Yep. So pushing yourself to not overanalyze and to get through that that process of comping and coming to value and coming to your offer quickly can be a challenge. So how how, how have you managed that? What have you done to get quicker at your analyzing? Well, I actually did some comparative analysis of uh, different ways to find the ARVs, mm -hmm. you know, all the way from Zillow to, to Redfin mm -hmm. and, and, and Privy and different ways. So I've timed them all, you know, yeah. so I did some races, you know. And uh, so I, I found that uh, if I can just kind of get a ballpark and if and there are a couple of different ways I do it. If I look at it and say, well, it looks like it's half around 50 percent. Yeah. You know, then I'll just make an offer at 45 percent. Yeah. You know, just to look for that motivated seller mm -hmm. and just keep throwing it out there like that. And if I get any response at all, you know, then there, there could be an action there. That's a great way to look at it. One of the things I like to say often is we don't make offers to get contracts. We make offers to uncover motivation. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah. So. It, regardless of price, if you just can get in the habit of putting that low offer in front yep. of sellers, yep. then the motivated sellers are going to respond favorably, right? Yep. So if you're offering 40% 40, 40 of Zillow, for example, or whatever analysis number it, it comes out to, that that's, it's that low number, we want to put that in front of the seller, or even if you're using an agent, give it to the agent as quickly as possible with the least amount of effort and time so that we can uncover the motivation because the motivated sellers are going to respond. Yes. Um, I was talking with Jamil today um, and there was a, a deal in Texas that I'm working on and it was listed for like 375. They, I started interacting and the agents tell me, yeah, this seller is extremely motivated. We're going to start doing some aggressive price drops. So I said, uh, don't do any price drops. Let me make my offer first because I want to keep the, the listing high. So then when I go to wholesale it, you know, I've got a big spread, sure, right? Sure. Makes it easier. Sure. So she didn't listen and did one price drop to like 45,000 price drops. So it's at like 325. And, uh, and I end up going back and forth and we end up, I end up getting the contract for 200,000. Ooh. On a 325 list that was a minute ago, like 375. 375, yeah. Yeah. And so extremely motivated, but it's just the process of putting that offer in front of the seller. So it was way overpriced, but it didn't matter to me because I don't really care about list price. I care about, is this a distressed property and is the seller motivated? And the only way to really know if they're motivated is just make the offer and then you'll find out. Yep. It's the, it's the number one indicator of uncovering motivation is put an offer in front of somebody. Then you'll find out. Yep. Nothing else will tell you better than an offer. Yep. Right. So th that's a great way to approach the business. If you can just look at it and say, what's the fastest way I can get to a number that's a that's following some type of a process, an analysis process, put that offer in front of the seller. I, maybe that number is good or not good, but if they're motivated, then we can now spend time on it. Yep. Now figure it out. Yep. Hey, just a quick thanks to one of our sponsors and we'll get right back to the video. This video is brought to you by PropWire. 
Now I get asked all the time how to find motivated seller leads and PropWire is simply the best software for finding leads and downloading lists. And the best part is it's 100% free and there are no limit to how many leads you can download. PropWire has vacant houses, pre-foreclosures, absentee owners, REOs, auctions, high equity properties, probate, tired landlords, and more, plus custom filters and stack lists so that you can laser target the most motivated sellers in your area. Plus they have cash buyers and private lenders nationwide so you can quickly wholesale houses and fund your rehab projects. Oh, and one more thing, this is not some seven day free trial that requires a credit card. Anyone can create a free account with just their email address and start building lists and downloading leads for free right away. Check it out at joinpropwire.com. And I, I, it's kind of, to me, it's, it's like it's not really important whether the number is good or not. Yeah, As long exactly. as it's really, really low. That's it. And even if my number is, is a little bit, it, it, it's low, but it's not low enough. Mm-hmm. If if they if they talk to me if they respond at that low number that I know there's something going on there yeah. there's some motivation there so then we can work again and I was surprised to learn that we could actually go back and get and go down and down again keep going down like on yes. this one yes. this one uh, yes. the original contract you had on my deal was what was it at do you remember because we went back and I renegotiated think it was right hundred and I think it was hundred and twenty or I think it was might be hundred hundred twenty I thought yeah, yeah hundred twenty yeah. originally yeah. Then we said, no, we got to get it lower. And we ended up getting it all the way down to, what was it? 80. 80. Yeah. So guys, we just kept renegotiating. Now, this one had a lot of due diligence to do because it was fire damage. And let's, we'll pop some, uh, I did a video on it, but let's pop some pictures up. But um, I mean, you could see this thing as like fried, fried crispy. It's actually not as bad as it looks. No. Talking to the contractor that uh, I ended up going with your contractor oh, that good, you good. got the bid from. Yeah, yeah great guy. guy. Good guy. And he's like, Jerry, it's 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 mostly smoke damage. It's a lot less fire damage than it is smoke damage. So you see all yep. the black everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And if, when you look at that, and I've done some fire damages, so I, I knew this, but you're like, wow, this whole house got burnt, but it really didn't. It was It's mostly just smoke damage, which is easy to remediate, right? Sure. And now yeah. it still has some fire damage, but... Um, so on this one, what we did as part of our due diligence, as I said, I said, Mike, we don't know how extensive this fire damage is. Let's get some bids. And then you ended up finding a reputable contractor in that area. He gave a bid, not just, he didn't just bid the, the fire damage work, but like whole project. Yep. Because he's a complete remodeler. Yep. Uh, and he does a lot of work for flippers and stuff. So he gave a full price of 112 Yep. on his bid to do this whole house, like end to end total, total remodel. And so now we had a, a budget to go off of for our analysis, and yep. we just followed the formula. We put the formula in. Um, I actually built in a little bit more to the rehab because when you're doing something that big, there's going to be some unforeseens. It makes sense. You know, so, so I built in, I think, another, I don't know, $8,000 or something. I went with a 120 budget, and the numbers penciled out at 80. Um, well, 90 really. And then you got the, went back, renegotiated the contract at 80 with a $10,000 wholesale fee. Yep. And then, you know, we approved the deal and, and ended up closing just a couple of weeks ago. Yep. So, you know, and, it, and, it, and I love that you said it was a, it was a learning experience to go kind of back and get feedback on the numbers. And this is really how you want to interact with your cash buyers. Um, I have some people in the program that will take offense like, well, my agent said it's a good deal or somebody else said it's a good deal. And you're telling me it needs to be at this number and they're kind of like offended. And, and I, I don't understand that because we get feedback as to why we want to be at this number and what makes it a good deal. And you want to really learn your cash buyer's formula and their analysis process and why they think the way they do and why they budget the way they do. That just makes you a better wholesaler. Because yep. now you'll know how to go out there and source and find deals that match your buyer's formula. Yep. Like the best wholesalers understand their cash buyers. They're the best wholesalers. Sure. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was offended. You know, I, I went through all kinds of emotional upset and, <laughs> and depression and everything, you know, because I work so hard and I, yeah. got this, I got this offer here, you know? Yeah. And you'll go through that more because yeah. that's, that's the life of a wholesaler, right? You work mm-hmm. hard and then you find out that maybe it's not a deal or sometimes you have a buyer and you get to the finish line and there's title problems and it falls apart. Sure. You know, so you really have to learn how to just keep, keep moving forward, keep learning, keep 
Yep. Working on the next deal. Keep learning. Don't get emotionally attached to any one deal. Mm -hmm. That's something I've had to learn and, and have, sure. have learned really well over the years is it's just a deal. And if that deal doesn't work out, there's another deal tomorrow. Look for the lesson. There's another deal tomorrow. And that's mm -hmm. an abundant mindset. If you can develop an abundant mindset, an abundant mindset says there's always another deal. Um, Brent Daniels one time said to me, the deal of a lifetime comes once a week. And I think he got that from somebody, but it, but now I say it, so it's now it's mine. But um, if you're in the game and you're active and you're and you're making offers every day, every week, you will get that deal. That good deal is going to come because yep. it's now it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you, what would you say has been the the biggest lesson you've learned uh, with this deal, going through this deal? I think uh, it's. Just what you've been saying about um, just keep going, mm. just keep going, and uh, and and for me personally, I think it's uh, looking f for the lesson learned instead of wasting my energy with negative feelings. Mm. You know, Good. but just just look for the lesson. What what can I learn from this? And uh, because I was fortunate enough to to apply that. You know, I, I've heard it and I've heard it, but I actually was able to apply it mm. this time and through this whole process. And so um, I just kept looking for looking for that. What am I what am I learning here? Mm. What can I learn out of this? And uh, so it's, it's made me it's, it's brought me a new skill mm. that I didn't have before. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And if, if someone's watching this, I mean, you've gave some great advice, but if someone's watching this and they're working on their first deal, um, what would you tell them? What would be your, your biggest advice for someone working on their first deal? I think you mentioned mindset, having a positive attitude through the process. Any other thoughts that would be helpful? Uh, just I mean, you've been in real estate a long time, so it's, this isn't your first, your first deal. But what would you think, someone that's brand new? I would say uh, just keep going. Even when, it, even when it seems like it's the end of the world mm -hmm. is never, ever going to work. You know, if mm. just keep taking the next step. Just keep, take one more step, keep one more step and keep taking that one more step. Mm. Because uh, look at, look at the evidence in, in the, in the world. People yeah. are, people are doing these deals. People yeah. are getting paid. You can see it all over YouTube mm -hmm. all the time. People are making money. So why not me? That's why not you, attitude. you know? Yeah, exactly. Why not you? With this deal too, you had a, when we got the contract, a lot of people asked this question, what was your earnest money and what was your closing date? And I'm trying to remember, were there any hangups with closing? It seemed like the closing went pretty smooth. It went very smoothly. Yes. Um, I, I had some, I had some challenges. I didn't uh, have a, I, 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 th I thought that maybe um, I wouldn't need a bank account set up because I didn't have a bank up, bank account set up mm. for my buying entity. Mm. So I had to go through that process, and so it's a little bit. Oh, of a because delay. that's how you got the check. Yeah, because yeah. the title company, you know, and I knew this, but I, for some reason or other, I I was forgot about this, but yeah. I neglected it. But uh, the title company has to pay the check out to the name, the person whose name is on the purchase on the contract. contract. The buyer's yeah. name has to be that entity. That's right. Yeah. So they won't cut a check to anybody else. So yeah. I hadn't had a bank account set up for that okay. yet. So I had to go set up a bank account. To, to cash your check. Yeah. That so makes sense. I had to yeah. just, so they just mailed me the check, you know. And I, oh, they so, did. Yeah. Okay. So I finally got the money last, last week. Okay. Good, good. But it closed on the 20th. Yeah. So, but so, otherwise everything was very smooth. And yeah. the relationship with the agent, do you feel like you've got a good relationship now with that agent? I think so. Yeah. yeah. She's, uh, yeah, she's looking to, um, you know, bring me some, uh, deals, you know, she's, and I, and I use it, that, that, uh, double dip, uh, conversation every mm -hmm. time I talk. To how do you say it? How, do, how does it go for you? What do you tell them? I say that, um, I'm, uh, looking at the interest in this area. I'm, I'm new in the area. So, uh, we're, we're doing this, um, on, um, on the remotely. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have an agent in town. So hopefully you can write for me, you know, yeah. I don't know, maybe you can make more commission that way. I don't know. And I just leave it up to them yeah. because they'll know. Yeah. And so, uh, and then also, are I they usually, are they, do they respond to that? Well, typically? Oh yeah. 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 They, they, it changes. Yeah. It changes their, their attitude. They're, <laughs> they're all of a sudden they're on my team. You know, if you're unfamiliar with what Mike's talking about, what he's saying is with on market, he's going directly to the listing agent representing the seller without his own agent. So there's no buyer's agent and he's he's at, he's letting the listing agent also be the buyer's agent. We call that dual agency or 
I coined it uh, double dip. So now they're earning both sides. So basically double the commission. Yep. So for some agents, that's very motivating. Yes. So then they go to bat for you. They work hard to try to get you the deal. Yes, yes. Yeah. So in fact, I got a call back from one and uh, I didn't have my, it, that was in the beginning kind of, mm -hmm. and it didn't have my follow-up system working right or you know my whole system, mm. my old keeping track of everything. But I was uh, three days late. Mm. And uh, so I missed that one. Three days late from when it came out for, for sale? He, or when, when he called me, yeah. He called oh. me, but I didn't call him back for three days. Okay. And so what he'd happened? already have found another buyer already. Oh, shoot. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. It was one that he had found a list just uh, at, I don't think he'd listed it yet. Mm. So it was a pocket listing. Yeah. Pocket listings when the agent has it, but they haven't listed it yet. Yeah. Those are great because you can get in there before they go active. Yep. And a lot of times you're not competing with the market now. Yep. Because he was going to get double commission. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. So keep working those relationships. That's going to yep. really pay off in the long run. Exactly. I found that um, somewhere around 25 to 30 solid relationships with active agents in a market okay. are going to get you deals consistently every month Okay. over time because they're going to start to call you. Hey, Mike, got a good one coming up. Take a look at it. Okay. And especially as you start to do deals, because now you've proven yourself. Yes. So now that agent is there. The trust now that you've created is huge because you performed. Yes. So now you better believe they're calling you on their next distressed property listing they get. Yes. yes. So that's, that's what's exciting. Yeah. You're just building momentum now. That's the goal. Okay. Well, Mike, I just want to congratulate you on your hard work, getting Thank this you. deal. Uh, what was it like getting that $10,000? I mean, tell, try to explain that emotion of a $10,000 check on a deal. What was that it, like? It was very exciting. Yeah, it's just nothing like it. You know, you just uh, want to take pictures and show everybody, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so it's really exciting. Well, we definitely got to take a picture, put that baby on social media. And, yeah. and, you know, that proof of concept is so powerful, isn't it? Yes, yes. Sh proving to yourself yep. that you can do it. Yep. It's, it's proof that all those really down moments and discouraging mm -hmm. moments and like it's the end of the world moment type of thing, yeah. you know, the experience that that sometimes, you know, will come yeah. you know, if, when you first start out. It's just wonderful proof that, you know, just to keep going. So what's next for Mike Allen? What are you hoping to do well, now? Well, uh, I, I have, um, I have uh, a, a partner and uh, he and I are working in Oklahoma. We're okay. working on the Oklahoma market. Keep going in Oklahoma. Yep. Keep getting more deals. Yep. Great. Yep. And um, we're starting to uh, look at uh, some Phoenix stuff, you know, just mm -hmm. because it's local. Yeah. To see what we might do here. But um, keep going. Keep doing just deals. Keep going. Yep. Try to be consistent. Maybe get uh, deals every month is a yep. great goal. Yep. For Consistency sure. is what we're working on right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guys, leave a comment and say, Mike, you're a flipping genius. Congratulate <laughs> him on his success. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, for me, it's a, like I said, it's a great privilege to get to meet you and, and Thank you. hear Likewise. your experience and your story. And guys, if you're looking to become a finder, just go to my10kcheck.com and you can learn all about the program that that Mike did. And and uh, again, I'm, I'm actively buying. Um, I've, my goal this year is to, is to buy, I'd love to buy, I'm doing some auction stuff right now, but I'd love to buy deals every single week. And just, uh, I think this is an amazing opportunity this year. I think we're going to get some amazing deals. We're going to start to see sellers coming down. I think we're going to see some great foreclosure deals coming out. So I'm doubling down. I'm excited to make 2023 as of this recording. It's the beginning of the year. I'm excited to make this year my best year. I kind of say that every year and it seems to happen every year, regardless <laughs> nice. of what the market's doing. Because it's not about the market, it's about your attitude, yep. right? It's about your internal game plan, not whatever the market's doing or interest rates or anything else. So yep. that's how I kind of live my life and do my business. And, and Mike, I wish you the best of luck. Hope you, you keep crushing it. Let's keep doing deals together. And again, thank you guys. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next video. Great to meet you, Jerry. Thank you.